I wanted to share some modifications and repair of a pair of Optimus Pro LX5 II bookshelf speakers. This is an original ad from Radio Shack about the LX. Was it their best-selling bookshelf speaker? I don't know. Reading through the ad, we see that this particular speaker has a dipole tweeter designed from Lenium Corporation. Now, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but hey, we're going to go with it. The Radio Shack licensed technology in 1995, I believe, and built these in their own facilities. So was the quality better or worse than what Lenium produced? I'll let you decide about that because I've never heard one of the Linium manufactured tweeters. But one thing Radio Shack did was to manufacture them with polypropylene for diaphragm material instead of silk. So about five years ago, I purchased a set of these speakers to use with a vacuum tube single-ended KT77 stereo amplifier that I built. And one of the things that I did after listening to them for a number of days was to modify the crossovers with the design by Larry Van Warmer. There's a link in the description to a web page where you can read about it. Also, upon opening them, I noticed that there was only a thin piece of dampening material inside each speaker. Now, Larry recommended, because of the issue of the metal cases ringing at certain frequencies, to glue in some tight-fitting dowel rods to stiffen the sides up. But I chose a little different approach and coated the inside with acoustic dampening material. I did this with one speaker and used speaker wool in the other for comparison. I like the sound with the dampening coating, so since I have them apart for repair, it's time to coat the other speaker cabinet also. You're also able to view Larry's instructions either in word format or plain text. Just follow the links on the web page. Larry goes into detail on how he tested and changed the crossovers. The design seems to work well to me. But the web page itself is authored by a fellow named Eric, and he also has some information about replacing the stock woofers with drivers from C's. But I don't know if those are even still available. But last week I noticed a slight rumbling coming from the right speaker, and upon inspection I found that it was time to replace the foam surrounds as they had aged and started to disintegrate. So I've got the old surrounds taken off of these speakers and I have the new ones here but I noticed one thing taking them apart is the old surrounds actually were glued on the back side and I worked one of these in and actually I think it fits better. So what I'm going to do is I already have a little bit of glue on the back side as you can see and I'm going to work that in there for that part to dry. And we're down here tonight in the basement. This is going to take a couple days because this glue has to dry. dry. Don't mind the wood burner in the washing machine running back there. That's what's going on in the background. But let me show you the inside of uh, my LX. I totally redid the crossover units. Now I'm going to send you a link with information on how to upgrade the crossover unit with the schematics. And also when you see this gray, I this is acoustical sound material. Let me find the uh, bucket here. I have to put some more coats on the inside. I did that as an experiment and it worked, but I'm going to put more in there. This is uh, Acoustex sound dampening coating. They recommend some things to do in the uh, upgrades that I'm going to show you because of this, this aluminum case can ring. But this seems to solve the problem uh, without any sound dampening material in here. Though I did put a little bit of fiberglass over top of the plastic on the where everything is soldered in there. But 
I'll get to that later and we'll talk about that after a while. Okay, I have this one attached, but I'm going to brush a little more glue on the inside. I like using these little brushes, they're throwaway, and they're great for doing things like this. Make sure you got a good seal. I'm just going to brush a little bit more around the edge here on the inside. You can hear Ragnar, our three-legged cat down there, meowing. Sounds like he's speaking Hebrew to me. Whoop. So I'm going to brush a little more on the inside. Don't be afraid to be generous. It's not going to hurt anything. These cones are not paper. They're poly. They're a poly like a plastic. So the glue really won't soak into it. On these particular speakers. Let me show you why I decided to put that surround underneath. It's actually because of the way of this sits. You see the cones at rest there. And actually, if I glue this here, in order to have a good seal on the frame, it seems to me that we're going to lose a little. Lose a little movement. So that's why I put it underneath. I just worked it under after I glued it. After I put some glue on the back side. I'll do this one next. I just worked it under there and centered it. And uh, sort of like that. But let's put some glue on there. And we'll center that one. Because it seems to fit better. Let's put a little glue around the edges here. I've done bigger speakers before where I put the surrounds on the outside because that's where they seem to work good. And as you notice, I'm not afraid to use a little extra glue. A little extra glue never hurt. That's a spot. Let me work this around now. Where's my little screwdriver here. I'll probably have to lift that foam up. Oh, here's the one I was looking for. So, I'm going to work this down underneath where the original one was glued. Sometimes you got to Fuss a little bit, but let's get it straight. There we go. Let's get it about centered in the uh, frame there. Pretty much. Now I'll just go around the edges here and squeeze this together from underneath.
And we're going to let that dry a few minutes. Then we'll brush some glue around. Let that dry good for 24 hours. Then we'll brush some glue around underneath with a brush. We'll lift up the uh, surround and brush some glue underneath there and get everything set on these. I don't have a photo of the original crossover wiring, but here's how I have mounted the modified crossover components. I secured the coils with hot glue, and that seems to have held up fine for the past five years or so. The author of these crossover modifications, you can see how I mounted, mounted everything that uh, I changed and added a little bit of hot glue. Um, he did some extensive testing as I said. But one of the problems with the box because it's metal is it tends to ring. And his suggestions were to support it by gluing some uh, wooden dowel tightly in the cases and he used felt instead of uh, wool for the inside but I use this Acoustic X. I'm going to put more in here right now. It seemed to work out. This is it's just a gray. It comes in a tub and it's a uh, sound, sound dampening coating. I think I got this over at uh, Parts Express some years ago. It's still good obviously. It's just like a goo. So I need to get another coat in there. So I'm going to put another coat in here and also I'm going to coat the other one. The other speaker I left with just foam inside because I wanted to compare and I don't know to my ears this sounded better with the Acoustic X in there. So the other one I'll give it a couple coats couple good coats of this. The thicker you put on there the more it's going to dampen. And it takes some time to dry. But that's okay too. We're going to gook this one up real good. Got to be careful not to get too close to the top because there is a ridge around this plastic cover that kind of fits down in there. So we'll get this one all gooped up and the other one. 